you are carrying out a field assessment, and based on your findings, it is clear that a humanitarian crisis is occurring and an urgent intervention is required. What should you do first? Should you rush for addressing critical issues? No. Before you start to address critical issues, you need to first formulate a strategy on how to resolve these issues and achieve, like that, the desired results. Heading straight into implementation without conducting relevant analysis to determine technical feasibility, resources and costs involved, and other factors could lead to failure in resolving the issue. This is why, during this course, you will get familiar with the so-called Result-Based Management Approach, RBM, and learn to identify the different steps of the project cycle. A significant proportion of humanitarian projects have failed to respond adequately to the needs. Some evaluations carried out found that the main causes of failure were due to poor planning and preparation. They highlighted in particular that many projects were not relevant to the beneficiaries, risks were insufficiently taken into account, and factors affecting the longer-term sustainability of project benefits were often ignored. This is why many organizations have adopted specific management strategies, such as the Result-Based Management, or RBM, to address these issues. RBM is to manage an intervention while trying to ensure its relevance, efficiency, effectiveness, impact, and other quality criteria. In other words, the RBM approach implies a shift in focus away from the actions to be carried out towards the consequences of the actions. In the RBM logic, resources or input are used to carry out activities. These activities produce specific outputs. An example of output could be a percentage of a targeted population in a given location have access to a sufficient number of functioning sanitation facilities within reasonable proximity and in line with local cultural standards. Outputs are the immediate effects of an activity. Several outputs produce outcomes, which are the likely or achieved medium-term effect of an intervention's outputs. An example of outcomes could be that, in a given area, a certain number of displaced persons are protected against the major environmental health hazards related to water quality, water quantity, hygiene and sanitation. Outcomes contribute to impacts. Impacts are the long-term effect of an intervention. They can be positive or negative, intended or unintended. An example of impact of an intervention could be that the prevalence of diseases linked to the environmental factors in the displaced population is no greater than that of the general population in the region in peacetime. In order to maximize the chances of achieving the desired outputs, outcomes and impacts, the RBM recommends to follow four main steps presented here in this cycle. The first step is the assessment and the analysis. In this step, you collect qualitative and quantitative data through a field assessment. Analyze the data along with information gathered from your stakeholders' conversation to identify the highest priority urgent issues. The aim of an assessment is to understand the situation in order to identify the problems, the source of the problems, and the consequences of the problems. There are different types of assessment. The needs assessment does not aim to identify an intervention, but to find out whether or not an intervention is required based on identified needs. Such assessment should at least provide information on who is affected or concerned by certain issues, how many people are affected or concerned, where are they located, what are the issues, why are they affected or concerned. You should gather info on the causes, risks and vulnerabilities, coping capacities and finally how will the situation evolve. Another type of assessment is the feasibility assessment, which aims to identify the possibility of undertaking a given humanitarian action, such as implementing an engineering project. 
It focuses on the factors likely to affect directly or indirectly the implementation and the success of the project. In such assessment, you have to gather information on the enabling environment, such as the regulations, the capacity of the service providers, information on the features of the areas, the state of infrastructure and other relevant technical information needed to carry out the project. In the second step, you have to formulate clear objectives based on context analysis and your assessment, and you should describe measurable intended results. You should assess the feasibility of your project, particularly attention should be paid to the future operation and maintenance. You have to plan activities and resources required to accomplish the objective. Then, based on your plan of actions, you could implement your project. Finally, you conduct evaluation and review lessons learned from success or failure to achieve the intended results. According to the results, you might have to restart the cycle. Don't forget that throughout the life of the project, you should monitor and follow up the activities in order to adapt the project according to the evolution of the situation. To summarize, there are many constraints in the management of humanitarian projects, such as the lack of data, an uncertain future, urgent needs. However, rushing to the implementation is likely to result in inadequate projects to address critical needs. The project management cycle is a sequence of logic steps to help you to maximize the benefits of programs for the beneficiaries. You assess, think, plan, do and review. Of course, in practice, the duration and importance of each phase of the cycle will vary depending on the context. Nevertheless, ensuring that adequate time and resources are committed to project identification and formulation is critical to supporting the design and effective implementation of relevant and feasible projects for the beneficiaries. Now, let's see some concrete examples of these different steps of project management. In the next two videos, some ICS engineers will share with you their experience of managing programs in rural environments and in an emergency.